Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode and in today's video we're gonna be talking about my first personal pair from Crockett & Jones which is the Hybrid Derby in Black Calf. Coming up! So how's it going my friends? Uh, it's been a while, uh, I had a lot of personal stuff, I was a bit burned out so I wanted to take a small break. But we're back! And what better way to start again another video by talking about Crockett & Jones, which is a very interesting brand because I've talked about it so much, yet I only have one pair of shoes from them and this is, you know, this is the hybrid derby which we're going to talk about today. I've been holding this for quite some time now with just some regular wear in the house, but I wanted to wait until the video and the review before I actually put some wear so you can see how it looks new and talk about all its qualities while doing that. So you are all familiar with Crockett & Jones, which is a very you know popular and heritage brand from Northampton, UK, made entirely in the UK, uh, which is nice. They're still Goodyear welted with a bench grade and a hand grade range. Uh, this was from the main collection and uh, they have a very, you say, special history because for the past eight, nine years, Crockett & Jones has been a partner of, uh, or like sponsor of James Bond and its movies. So they provide him with a lot of different models to wear, which is very good publicity and shows that, you know, they're good shoes. And this particular model, uh, it has appeared in already two of them. I think it's Skyfall and Spectre and <laughs> the much maligned upcoming No Time to Die. So I thought, I don't have a derby. I really, do I have one? I only have one from Normal Villalta coming up. So I'm like, I only have also one pair of black shoes. So two birds with one stone here. And I really like the shape of the last, which I'm also going to talk about. Uh, these shoes are also, well, not affordable, but very good value, which is $539 uh, in my shop, but we're going to talk about all of it like later. And in the close-up, we are going to talk about my findings and how I feel about the shoes in general. And of course, I will discuss fit, availability, value, and who is this for or maybe not. So let's begin with a close-up. All right, we're ready to begin. As you can see, there is no box for me to show you here because I've reviewed so many Crocodile Jones shoes and the experience is just the same. You get a box, you get some shoe bags and that's it. So watch another video if you want to see the box. Uh, we are here for this today and let's begin by discussing what is this. So as you can see, this is a classic derby, but it has a plain toe, so there is no cap toe stitched here. And it's also not the traditional type that you see, you know, with different facing here, usually the hockey one. Uh, this is a bit more, you know, this is a three eyelet derby, so it's not five eyelets, or some cases four, sometimes it's six, or some cases two. This one is a, a three one, and I think it looks the best proportionally when you take, you know, this particular design into account. So plain toe derby, three eyelets, black calf from Crockett and Jones main dread collection, and it has a city sole which is from Crockett and Jones, and I think it's pretty good looking, very simple. Uh, it's uh, it's not as thick, so it has a nice profile. And of course, you get the 348 soft square last, which is quite chiseled, and you can see better like this. I like it very much uh, compared to the most usual round ones that they have. Now, about the shoes themselves, uh, it does give a more elongated appearance, and you can see because of the plain toe and the way the last is shaped. Uh, there is not so much stitching, of course, as you can see, there's only here stitching up to the you know the front of the shoe and there is of course a nice simple dog tail back shim at the back and that's about it in most uh, areas uh, you will see a single stitching like on the back and of course here apart from the bottom part which has a really interesting triangular point like right here uh, that is double stitched uh, so there's not much to go wrong 
and uh, it doesn't take as much effort, I would say, as other designs or shapes to make. The welt and, you know, the it, it is a bit bulkier, you would say. I think this is quite a dressy derby, but I would like to see it a bit more trimmed along the edges. I mean, you can clearly see everything. Some people might like it. The SPI stitches per inch are good. Uh, there's nothing special about them, I would say. And there is no, you know, fudging or some special details here. It's just a good solid shoe. It surprises me the how structured it is, uh, you know, alongside these areas. But what surprises me the most is the leather. Now, we cannot speak about leather quality, you know, directly, um, because it takes a long time before leather shows its pr true properties and how it changes. But this particular one, I can tell you that it's, it's really buttery smooth and feels really good to the touch. It really, so, not surprised me, or pleasantly surprised me, but it makes me feel good to just hold this shoe and run my hand over it. And I like how the last is shaped. Uh, you will see later that it fits me quite well as well. The trimming inside uh, is quite good. It's very consistent. It's very, you know, no loose threads anywhere. And inside you get a, you know, half a sole, half in sole, sorry, uh, which is branded. And that's about it. I struggle to come with a bit more detail about something that I might be, you know, looking at and it doesn't look as good. Uh, I did find a couple of stuff. For example, I cannot show you, but the tongue part, like, I'm, like right here where I'm touching on this shoe, uh, it has a small bulge, which seems to show that there is a bit of space between the lining and uh, the upper leather, uh, but it's not nothing that you would notice or feel and there's nothing that, you know, would be an issue. Uh, you can clearly see, uh, you know, also inside how, you know, the insole is glued, which is glued nicely, not <laughs> like the seamless uh, that I had. Uh, overall, it feels like a very solid shoe. And you can see also the stitching on the bottom. Uh, it's quite consistent. It This city sole is reminiscent of the Dynite, if you look at the round points here, but has a very low profile you cannot see anything right so it's pretty good and uh, i think i like it more for urban adventures especially you know if there are little stones and things like that uh, in your daily walk uh, but i will always uh, appreciate and love a leather sole a bit more and that's about it i think they look pretty good especially from this angle and i look forward to wearing them and you know telling you my thoughts later on Let's move on. And that was it. Honestly, uh, I was quite indifferent in the beginning about Crockett and Jones because I thought they were a bit overpriced, uh, especially when I got them in my shop for the first time and I started to see the models and feel them. However, with time, I really realized why people like them so much. Uh, they may be most of them, you know, quite contemporary and classic and you could say boring, but the rest of the shoe, uh, when it comes to the quality of the leather, how it feels, uh, a certain specific lasts, and the whole attention to, to you know, certain detail, it, they may, it makes them really good and consistent, at least. So, if you are the type that wants, a, a, you know, either a classic shoe or a well-built shoe, uh, I think they are a no-brainer and they're just above or around the $500 mark where, you know, above that, you sort of start to see some diminishing returns. I think these are really good shoes when it comes to the quality. I'm still very surprised, as you show in the close-up, about how smooth the leather is. It has, you know, this, this buttery soft feeling to them while I touch it. I really want to see how it's going to, to age. But, you know, you look at it close, you see all the pores. Uh, it feels like a high-quality item. And most importantly for me is, uh, you know, it's still a derby, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to wear it. I got nothing against derbies, I got nothing against plain toe shoes. I mean, I love whole cuts, but it's just, I'm not so inspired by, you know, like a regular derby or a black shoe. I find it a little boring, but, you know, that's just me. If you love black shoes, this is great. And that's about how I feel about the design. It's, uh, it's not over the top. 
Uh, it's not exactly, you know, classic because it has a bit more soft square last. Uh, but overall, it, it is a good shoe. And I, I really like what they're going with, you know, the direction they're going to with the City Souls and phasing out Dianite, who I start to believe it's, it's a little stiff after wearing it for a long time. And now we're gonna talk quickly about sizing. So these are on the 348 last, which uh, it's very interesting. I find it comfortable and felt snug and nice in my regular UK8 or US9D for the rest of you. Uh, but it is feels a little less spacious, you would say, from the 325, where some people size down half a size. Uh, for me, this is a great fitting ready to wear last, like great fitting. I have just enough uh, space on my heel and my, surprisingly or not, my little toe is not being pressed or anything. And there's just enough toe space for my, you know, my feet to wiggle around. The instep feels quite okay. And there is not much pressure on my foot. And, you know, it's still a derby, so it's quite easy to put on and off. And it doesn't pressure the top of your foot as much as maybe an Oxford. And uh, as far as the support, uh, we will see. Uh, so far I had no problems, but I'm just walking around the house. Uh, we will see. I will update if I have more news, but I expect them to be comfortable. The only area that you could say that I got a little more, uh, not exactly pressure, but it was a bit tighter, was around this, which is the widest part of the foot. And I could definitely feel my foot, you know, grinding, not grinding, like pressing against the wall slightly. Uh, but it will stretch a little bit, and I think it will be perfect. I think this is one of the best ready to wear fitting last that I've uh, just tried out of the box. So that's the sizing advice for me. Uh, if you go for the 348 last, take it through to your size UK. So your regular, you know, Carmina Rain, Mermin Hero, uh, mo most I would say Crockett and Jones last, Sand Crispins, Classic, etc. For uh, those that are in the US, I would say that it corresponds to a US 9D in something like Allen Edmonds, Park Avenue, Strands, etc. And that's about it. I think they are quite elegant uh, for certain people. They are a bit dressier looking maybe. So think about your wardrobe. For example, if you wear jeans all the time and you want a more casual look, uh, this is probably not for you. But if you wear, you know, suits or even you wear jeans, but you're looking for something to dress up, your your jeans and look a bit you know fancier and dressier then these are a very good choice uh, they only come in black and of course uh, multiple uh, options for you if you want to buy uh, either go through the Crockett & Jones direct you know uh, selling points uh, or certain retailers support your favorite retailer uh, I also have them in the Noble Shoe and I will put all the description you know all the links and everything and you can get them today in most sizes for $539.99 US dollars with free shipping, which is a very competitive price. Uh, a lot of you have asked me why the price is lower, uh, because pretty much Crockett and Jones itself has a more level pricing. Think about like Apple with iPhones all over the world and different overhead and you know import taxes, etc. Uh, while we or I can remove outside the EU, the VAT, which is 25%, which is higher. So think about that when you're purchasing. And that's about it, uh, really good shoes. Um, looking forward to wearing them. Uh, I can't get over how nice the leather feels to, to touch and I really want to see how it ages. The 348 last is very comfortable for me and I think it looks it looks more than you know how I like it, a bit more chisel than software. Uh, overall, great shoes. I don't think you would be disappointed. I actually think you'd be thrilled to have a pair like this, especially if you love derbies or a more casual shoe, but a dressier casual shoe. But at the same time, you can wear it with a fancy suit and look great, especially charcoal gray. That's about it. I want to hear your opinions uh, about this pair about this model, uh, generally anything shoe related, you can just write me in the comments. Uh, if you're new or, you know, returning, 
I would also like to hear from you and make sure to smash the like button, subscribe and press the bell for more notifications as I try to ease myself back in the schedule for more shoe reviews and much more. But before you go, uh, wait for the customary dad joke of the week returning. So how does a dog stop a TV show? It's quite simple. He presses pause. I don't think I need to say anything, do I? I will see, <laughs> I will see you in the next one. Bye.